students. In this video, we're going to discuss an introduction to vectors. So a vector is a directed line segment. In this example that I have here for you, the directed line segment is PQ, the initial point being at P and Q being the terminal point. Now, an algebraic vector V is represented as follows. We write um, a vector using bold print whenever it's typed. But if you're going to handwrite it, then you put a little arrow to indicate that it's a vector quantity. And it's expressed in component form A comma B, where A and B are real numbers, which are scalars, called the components of the vector V. Now, I want to show you an example here of vector V with components A and B. A vector written in this form is a position vector. Position vector means that the initial point is at the origin. And notice the terminal point is AB, and that corresponds with what the components are of the vector, A and B. But to indicate that it's a vector quantity and not an ordered pair, you would differentiate between parentheses versus the brackets that we use for a vector. Now notice here, I can make a right triangle and the horizontal distance of the triangle is going to have length a and the vertical distance will have length b and that's why we say that the horizontal component or the x component is equal to a and the vertical component is equal to b so when you're trying to figure out what the components are for a vector if you have the initial point p1 with x1 y1 and terminal point p2 with x2 y2 then in order to write your vector v as a position vector you would take x2 minus x1 and then y2 minus y1 so basically you reorient the vector so that its initial point is going to be at the origin and notice here we could do that with this um, vector that's drawn here the initial point was the origin already zero zero and the terminal point was a b and so that's why when we write vector v it's a minus zero, b minus zero, which is just a, b. All right. Now, another important quantity that you're going to compute is the magnitude or the length. We'll talk about that later. But keep in mind, a vector quantity is different than a scalar quantity. So a vector quantity has direction. It has magnitude or length when you're in two space and direction, whereas a scalar quantity has magnitude only, okay? So for example, a scalar quantity, if I said I have eight jelly beans, right? That's a scalar quantity. Or if I say I'm five feet, four inches tall, that's a scalar quantity. A vector quantity is when you include a direction. So if you're saying I'm traveling 40 miles per hour east, right? then now you've included a direction. Or you say the rate is slowing by 10 feet per second. So that would have a negative sign attributed to it. So scalar are just things basically that you count, that you measure, that the sign wouldn't be relevant or make any sense. But, um, but where a vector quantity can have a direction, positive, negative, or at an angle, okay? Now, we have two very special vectors that we're gonna consider, and they are unit vectors. Unit vectors have length one. Okay, we'll talk more about that in a minute. So these are special unit vectors. Length is one, or the magnitude is one. And they're described as i hat and j hat. Now notice when it's typed again, it's typed in bold, but when you hand write it out, you're going to put a little hat on it. So i hat has the components 1, 0. Notice the initial point is at 0, 0. Terminal point is 1, 0. And j hat, the unit vector that moves in the y direction, would have components 0, 1. So we have two ways of expressing vectors. We could write our vector v in component form as a, b, or we could write it as a, i hat plus b, j hat. So get used to seeing both ways of expressing a vector. Okay, they're interchangeable. And depending on what you're doing with your vector, one form of writing it may be better than the other. Okay, 
So now let's look at some properties of vectors. If I have two vectors, V and W, then when I add them together, notice you just add the corresponding components. You add the X components and you add the Y components to get the final result. And then similar with subtraction, here alpha is a scalar, so it's not a vector. When you multiply a vector by a scalar, you just distribute the scalar to each of the um, components. And then the double absolute value bars, that's the magnitude or the length of V. That's equal to the square root of A1 squared plus B1 squared. I want you guys to look at this really quick. I'm going to go back to the picture that I had earlier. If we wanted to figure out the magnitude of this vector V, the length of this vector, notice here, right, if I wanted the length of this side, that's the hypotenuse of this triangle. So that would be the square root of A squared plus b squared. So the magnitude of a vector v, as long as v has components a and b, is basically just finding the hypotenuse of that right triangle. It's the sum, it's the square root of the sum of the square of its components. Okay? So magnitude is length, that's a scalar quantity, but the vector itself has direction. So let's look at some examples here. It's not going to be as difficult as maybe it seems initially. So the vector v has initial point p and terminal point q. Write v in the form ai hat plus bj hat, that is, find its position vector. So, if I'm going to express v in component form, it's going to be the terminal point minus the initial point. So direction matters. And notice they said p was the initial and q was the terminal. Okay? So I'm going to write this as x component is going to be 6 minus negative 1. And then the y component would be 2 minus 4. So the components are 7 and negative 2. And the problem specifically asked for me to express it in terms of the um, unit vectors i hat and j hat. So this is going to be 7 i hat minus 2 j hat. Okay. The other thing it asked is for... Oh, that was it. Okay, I thought it wanted the magnitude. Let's do it just for fun. It's such good practice. So magnitude of V, that's going to be the square root of 7 squared plus negative 2 squared. So that's going to be the square root of 49 plus 4, which is rad 53. So that's its length. Okay. Now I want to graph for you really quickly what's going on. I know it didn't ask for that, but this will help you understand basically what we're doing when we write something as a position vector, okay? So initially, the points P and Q are what I'm going to plot. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here's X, here's Y. One, two, three, four, five. That's negative five. Up one, two, three, four. Down one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so point P, I'm going here, okay? Point P has coordinates negative 1, 4. So that's right here. There's point P. And point Q is at 6, 2. There's Q. So here's my vector V. Now, when you write it as a position vector, when I write it as a position vector 7, negative 2, remember, that means I'm assuming the initial point is at the origin. So that's where I'm going to start that one. And then the coordinates of the terminal point are precisely the components. So I'm going to go 7 in the x direction, negative 2 in the y direction. And here's my vector v again. They're both vector v, right? They both have the same length and the same direction. I've just moved or translated where that initial point is. Okay, and the nice thing about writing a vector as a position vector is that when you just look at the components, then you also know where the terminal point is, right? And you get a better feel, too, for the direction as well as the magnitude when it's written that way. All right, let's look at one more example here. I have initial point P, terminal point Q. So same thing as before. I'm going to write vector V. X component is going to be 2 minus 1, terminal minus initial. Same thing for the Y component. So this is just 1, 1. And then they wanted me to write it in terms of the unit vectors. So I'll have 1 I hat plus 1 J hat. So that's done. Oh no, what happened to the hat? It looks like a halo. Uh-oh, there we go. And then let's just get the magnitude of V while we're at it. So it's going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared. So that's rad 2. Okay. Good. So I think those exercises should be pretty easy. Moving on. Find the magnitude of V. 
So vector v is already written as a position vector for us. So I can just go ahead to find its magnitude. I'm going to take the square root of negative 5 squared plus 12 squared. Maybe you already know what this is, right? This is a 5, 12, 13 right triangle. So 25 plus 144, that gives me 169. Rod 169 is 13. Good. Next one, v is negative i hat minus j hat. So magnitude of v is going to be the square root of negative 1 squared plus negative 1 squared. So that's going to be rad 2. So notice magnitude's always going to be positive, right? You're finding the length of the vector. It's not going to be negative. All right, now we're going to practice using some of our vector properties. So we're going to find each quantity if vector v has components 3 i hat minus 5 j hat and w is negative 2 i hat plus 3 j hat. If you want to rewrite the vectors in component form like this, sometimes it's easier. Or you can leave it in terms of i hat and j hat. It's totally up to you. So this 3 here is a scalar, right? It's not a vector. So I'm taking 3 times my vector v which is 3, negative 5, minus 2 times my vector w, negative 2, 3. And then now you're just going to distribute. So this is going to be 9, negative 15, minus, this is negative 4, and 6. And so I'm going to have 9 plus 4, so that's going to give me 13. And then negative 15 minus 6 is negative 21. Okay, now if you didn't switch it, then it's no big deal. Okay, if you left it in terms of the i hat and j hat, I'll just show you what it would look like. So you'd have 3 times 3 i hat minus 5 j hat minus 2 times negative 2 i hat plus 3 j hat. And then you just distribute and collect like terms as if those were regular variables. So you would have 9 i hat minus 15 j hat plus 4i hat minus 6j hat, which is 13i hat. Always put the i hat first, minus 21j hat. Okay, and if the directions don't specify how they want the final vector written, then either notation is fine. All right, one more. We're going to find the magnitude of v plus w. So first I have to add v and w. So v plus w, that's going to be 3, negative 5, plus negative 2, 3. So adding the x components together, I'm going to get 1. And then adding the y components together, I get negative 2. So now I'm going to take the magnitude of this vector. So I'm going to have the square root of 1 squared plus negative 2 squared, which is rad 5. All right, so as usual with math, just start on the inside of an expression and work your way out. Okay, I mentioned before a unit vector has length 1. And a lot of the times, especially when you move on to um, calculus and other courses, you want to rewrite a certain vector, maintain the direction, but change the length so that it's a unit vector. You want to change it so that its magnitude or its length is 1. Well, what do you do if the length is not 1? Well, if you have some non-zero vector v, then if you take v and divide each of the components by its magnitude, you're going to get a unit vector that has the same direction. Okay? So let's look at an example here so you can understand what's going on. So v is equal to negative 3j hat. So basically, if I were to write it using the other notation, we'd have 0 for the x component and negative 3 for the y component. So what's the magnitude or the length of this vector? Well, it's the square root of 0 squared plus negative 3 squared. So it's 3. That's its magnitude. And maybe that was obvious to you. Can you imagine what vector v would look like if we were to graph it? So initial point, remember, is at 0, 0. And then x component of the terminal point, that's 0. And it goes negative 3 units in the y direction. So here's where it starts, and it's going to go down to here. Let me make this a little darker so you can see. Okay, there's vector v. Clearly the length is 3. Now I want a unit vector that's in the same direction as v. So to get this unit vector, I take v 
and then I divide by its magnitude. So V had components 0, negative 3, and I'm going to divide them by the magnitude of V. Well, remember the magnitude of V was 3, so I'm going to divide these components by 3. So I'm going to have 0 divided by 3, that's still 0, and then negative 3 divided by 3, that's negative 1. So this is the unit vector. Can you see that the length is 1? The components are 0, negative 1. So here's my unit vector. See how it's in the same direction. It's pointing exactly straight down, due south, right? But now its length is 1 instead of 3. Right now it might seem like, well, what was the point of that? But later on when you're in calculus and you have to do more complicated problems, you're going to need a unit vector. So you'll be grateful you know how to do this. Okay, let's look at one more example here. So here's my vector v. I want to write it as a unit vector maintaining the direction. So v has components negative 5, 12. Let's first get its magnitude. Do you remember? We did this one already. It's 13, right? Square root of negative 5 squared plus 12 squared is 13. You don't even have to show work if you know it, okay? So my unit vector u is equal to v divided by the magnitude of v, which is going to be negative 5, 12 divided by 13. So u will have components negative 5 over 13 and 12 over 13. Okay, and you can check, you can find the magnitude of this vector right here and confirm that it's a unit vector, right? You could take the sum of the squares of the components and make sure that it comes out to 1. So then you know you did it correctly. Okay, so that concludes the lesson on vectors. It was short and sweet. And don't worry, when you move on to your other math classes, you're going to learn a lot more about them. But this was just an introduction to hopefully whet your appetite.